A few of you have already requested the JBL Bar 1000, and thankfully I've got it in for review. In the UK, it can be found for roughly £1,000. It's a 7.1.4 channel soundbar with detachable speakers, supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX, and even Dolby Vision pass-through. Now, in this review, you can see how it compares to some of its competitors, from the likes of Harman Kardon, Samsung, or even, let's say, Sennheiser, and also to see if it's actually worth its price tag. So to kick off this review, I would like to talk about its design, and here the dimensions will be on your screen. I'd like to commend JBL for actually achieving a very slender profile, therefore meaning that it will fit on most cabinet setups in front of a television, whereby it's not obscuring any of your view. At least it didn't do it in my case in front of a 55-inch TV. Now you can wall mount it if you so wish. Now onto the two detachable speakers, they can be removed from a main soundbar unit, and in order to preserve the aesthetics, JBL has provided two magnetic cover clasps both for the soundbar and indeed the rear speakers. Now in terms of the overall battery life, you should expect around 10 hours on a singular charge. And here they can be charged via USB Type-C input. This means that you can have them also permanently plugged into power and therefore never running out of any juice. In order to recharge them, it will take you roughly three and a half to four hours. Now aside from external power supply, you can also plug in the rear speakers back into the main soundbar unit and here they will charge when they're in standby mode, which makes it quite convenient, so therefore meaning if you have it plugged into the soundbar and then you want that cinematic experience, you can simply detach the speakers, place them near your sofa or indeed just behind you in order to really get that room feeling experience. So moving swiftly on, we get onto controlling the soundbar, and here at the top of it, there's a few physical buttons, which are certainly appreciated over touch-sensitive buttons. Better still, you've got a little LED indicator that's at the front of the soundbar, therefore giving you the ability to know what settings you're adjusting, or including the metadata that's being played through it, for example, Dolby Atmos or DTSX. Now, if you do want to control your settings from afar, there's a bundled remote. It's very sleek and stylish, and I've got no complaints whatsoever. But better still, if you want to further enhance the experience, you want to download the JBL One app. Now this provides you all the same sort of settings via the physical remote because it's got a virtual remote control with even haptic feedback, which is great to see. And then you've got a three band equalizer. Although it's slightly a shame over here that the three band equalizer doesn't retain your last use setting. And therefore, if you were to disable it, or indeed if, for example, you wanted different profiles, well, alas, you're not gonna have that. You're gonna have to reset it manually each time. You can also integrate with different music services straight from the app, and also you can adjust a lip sync delay, all of which are certainly appreciated and adds to the overall functionality of the soundbar. Now moving on from the app, I should talk about connectivity, and here over a wireless connection you have got Wi-Fi, whereby Apple AirPlay, Google Chromecast, and Alexa MRM are all supported, all of which are appreciated as it allows you to have higher quality playback over a wireless connection. If you just want to quickly pair it up to, let's say, your friend or family's phone, then you can use Bluetooth, where the lowest quality SBC codec is supported only. As such, you'll want to use it sparingly. Now for you to connect up to your television, you have got optical, or better still you've got HDMI, whereby the ARC and the higher quality eARC standards are supported. It is of course backwards compatible, therefore ARC will be supported on all the televisions, but if you've got a more modern day television, you'll be pleased to know that the eARC provides uncompressed Dolby Atmos data. Now, in order for you to connect up devices to the soundbar unit, you have got three HDMI inputs. It's great to see three inputs indeed supported. And if I'm not mistaken, there are also HDMI 2.1 ports, therefore allowing you some 4K 120 Hertz pass through via modern day consoles. So with all of that out of the way, let's get onto a sound demo. I appreciate it's not gonna be ideal over YouTube nor using my microphones, but it'll give you a bit of a taster. First off, we'll be playing back Priya J's track titled Like Me, where we flicking through different modes, so definitely do check out the annotations on your screen. Then we'll be going to Mile Kundra's track, which is titled Polluting, and this will give an indication of the different levels that are on offer with the subwoofer, and whereby I'll be adjusting the bass levels. And then I'll be going and enabling and disabling the pure voice dialogue technology on my piece to camera while presenting the Honda Civic on Totally EV. Yet again, do check out the annotations on your screen to understand how the soundbar is actually operating.
happens then? Well, here the engine uses a clutch system to effectively disengage and connect directly to the front wheel drive system. In other words, it has a one-to-one -one ratio. This therefore means that you are going to be a little bit more efficient on the road because you're not having to go and power the electric motor or power the battery pack, rather that the engine is powering the front wheel drive system. Now with the audio demo out of the way, I should just quickly mention the soundbar setup. There's 880 watts of total power output. 440 watts is delivered from the main soundbar unit, 70 watts on each of the surround speakers, and 300 watts from the 10-inch subwoofer unit. Now there's 15 drivers in total, which also includes the subwoofer. Within the main soundbar unit, you've got five racetrack drivers, three 0.75-inch tweeters, and then two 2.7 inch upwards firing full range drivers. Within the surround speakers, each of them house a singular 0.75 inch tweeter and a 2.75 inch upwards firing full range driver. The frequency response of the system is rated by the manufacturer at 33 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. So how does the configuration of the JBL Bar 1000 actually perform? Well, subjectively, I will say I was actually left a little bit disheartened. At the £1,000 price tag, I was actually expecting a little bit more. So let me break it down. First off, in terms of the sub-bass response. Now, you have got a big, hefty 10-inch driver that's comprised within the subwoofer unit. But unfortunately, it's more quantity rather than quality because it only extends down to 33 hertz. A lot of its competitors actually offer a little bit better. Say, for example, the Sennheiser Ambio Soundbar Plus is far superior in this department, or indeed some of the alternatives out there from the likes of Sonos or Bose, which offer a dedicated subwoofer unit, which can be purchased as an additional extra, but then is providing you with a far superior experience. Frankly, over here, I was expecting a little bit more in terms of the overall quality of the sub-bass experience. Now, don't get me wrong, the overall quantity is plentiful. In my case, the level three mode seems to be the sort of right sort of tuning at least for my room's acoustics. I felt the amount of quantity in terms of the sub bass rumble was certainly there and can certainly be felt. Therefore, it can give you some vibrating door frames if you're gonna really be clanking it up, specifically under higher levels. Now, as for the mid bass, I've got no complaints whatsoever. The main soundbar unit does do an excellent job of providing good quantity and quality across the mid bass tones. You're gonna be left excited when you're listening back to your favorite tracks, or indeed, let's say, when you're consuming movies or watching videos. Now, as for the mid-range, this is where I was actually left the most disappointed. Even if you were to enable the pure voice function, I think you'll find that the mid-range just feels a bit too recessed. In comparison to its competitors, including its siblings from the likes of Harman Kardon and Samsung, which are all within the same group, here I just felt that the alternatives within the Samsung group just provided a far better experience across the mid-range tones, specifically in terms of the lower mids. Aside from this, you have got some alternatives from the likes of Creative or even Sen Sennheiser that provide a far superior job of delivering a far more engaging mid-range response. And as a result, it just left me disheartened when I was listening back to dialogue. Even when I was watching, let's say, movies, and here there's dialogue and action scenes, I just felt that the bass and the highs were just being accentuated a bit too much and provided a bit too much of a V-shaped sound signature. Now, as for the highs, they extend relatively well, but I was expecting a little bit of that zingy top end. You might have noticed via the app that I did increase the treble quite significantly, and by doing so, it gave a little bit more life to the high end extension, but still, I was expecting a little bit more. Now, aside from the pros and cons of its sound frequency range reproduction, what about when it comes to soundstage? Well, here, the overall width and depth and also the instrument separation isn't bad. Although some flagship systems from the likes of Harman Kardon, Samsung, and also Sennheiser provide a far more engaging experience. Due to the multitude of extra drivers they've got housed within the main soundbar driver or indeed via their rear speakers. For example, if we take the flagship system from Samsung, it integrates three drivers within each of the rear facing drivers, whereas there's only two within the JBL Bar 1000. Now, what I will say here is that it's great to see that the detachable speakers can be used in different ways. And specifically, if you take it away from the main soundbar unit, you will get that better experience, whereby it's filling more of the room and gives you a little bit more of that engagement with the content you're consuming. I'm not really sure if that came across via my audio demo, but I can safely say that when sat in person, I certainly preferred using the soundbar setup with the audio drivers placed next to me rather than within the main soundbar unit. 
Hopefully that makes sense, but effectively what I'm trying to say is that the overall soundstage reproduction is neither great nor is it bad. Now for me to further demonstrate the overall soundstage, I would like to go and talk about the increased metadata and that is Dolby Atmos. Now here it does support also DTSX, but in my own configuration, I've got Dolby Atmos in terms of a demo. And here I'll be using Transformers Age of Extinctions. Do check out the annotations on your screen because I'll be flicking through Dolby Atmos and also Dolby Digital. Now hopefully that little audio demo gave you a taster as to what the soundbar's capabilities are. And indeed via the extra metadata of Dolby Atmos, it really utilizes the 7.1.4 channel configuration, namely focusing on the 0.4, in other words, the upward firing drivers. It gives you a little bit of that extra nuances, for example, from the gunshots to the vocal tones or the explosions which are taking place, and therefore means that you feel a lot more engaged. So therefore, if you have access to using DTSX or Dolby Atmos, you'll certainly appreciate it being fed through by the soundbar. Just again, reiterating the point of the overall soundstage reproduction, it is neither great nor bad, and it very much goes on to my same sort of comments that I made about its performance of Dolby Digital or indeed PCM. So with all that in mind, it brings me on to my verdict of the JBL Bar 1000. And on the whole, it's actually not a bad system, but I just consider that the overall price point that it comes in at, at least at the time of filming, that there's some better alternatives out there, even from the likes of the Samsung Group, which own JBL and Harman Kardon, and indeed over here, the likes of Samsung and Harman Kardon provide good overall soundbars within their respective categories. Aside from this, you've got alternatives from the likes of Sennheiser or Creative to also look at. And then of course, you've got then the likes of Sonos and also Bose. These will all excel in their own respective categories. And my favorites will be down description below for your own consideration. Now I'd be curious to know which soundbar you would pick and as to what you make of the JBL Bar 1000. If you own it, we're looking at it or even have compared it to some of the other flagship systems that I've mentioned in this review or indeed linked in the description below. Now if you've liked this independent detail review and want to see more, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which are certainly appreciated. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.